I know what it is, but I can't explain it. It's something to do with protecting people, environment. Well, they know that it's harmful to the atmosphere. Yeah, it's all the smoke that comes off when they burn coal and that. <laughs> I don't know anything about the environment. I'm very naive, I don't know about it, but I know I'm against whatever damage has been done to it. <laughs> We've all heard the words, but few of us actually know exactly what is meant by let it petrol, acid rain, ozone depletion, the greenhouse effect. This video looks at the causes, the effects, and the solutions. You'll see that there are no easy magic answers, and that the solutions to one problem often make things worse for another. Why put lead in petrol? Because it breaks down the fumes that come out. No, 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 no. It's meant to be good for the engine because it's meant to make keep the engine clean. Because it was cheap, I suppose, or something. It runs, it runs better. better. No, all I know is it's totally stupid. I don't think you need it, really. In a perfect engine, petrol burns when exploded by a spark from the spark plug smoothly powering the car. In real cars, what actually happens is that the fuel can explode at the wrong time. The effect is called knock. Knock wastes fuel and damages the engine. Putting lead in petrol is simply an easy way of preventing most knocking. Leaded exhaust is dangerous. It is thought to particularly affect young children living near busy roads. Simple engine adjustments can be made which get rid of the need for leaded petrol. Many people have had their cars altered and all new cars have to run unleaded. But you must remember that the unleaded car is inefficient using more petrol to travel the same distance. What do you need here? Industrial chemical. Coal and oil, isn't it? Petrol. Radioactive, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know about power stations. Not nuclear fuels, it's the other one. Fossil fuels. Coal and oil power stations. Cars. Some industries release acidic gases. Sulfur dioxide reacts with water and oxygen in the air to make sulfuric acid. Oxides of nitrogen from car exhaust react to make nitric acid. These acid-forming gases are believed to be the cause of dead forests, decayed buildings, and damaged health. When acid rain falls, it can chemically react with the earth to release poisonous materials like aluminium and cadmium, otherwise locked in the soil. The acidic and poisonous mixture washes into rivers and lakes, killing fish and plants. Power stations can be fitted with special devices called flue gas desulfurizers. The smoke from the station is chemically treated to remove the sulfur dioxide. They are very expensive. It will cost 1.2 billion pounds to cut British SO2 emissions by just 40%. Cars can be given catalytic converters. Fitted into the exhaust, they change the gases into non-acidic nitrogen and carbon dioxide. The converters are very expensive. They use platinum, a material more expensive than gold. Desulfurizers and converters both solve the problems of acid rain at the cost of burning more fuel. In using more coal and petrol, they make more carbon dioxide. It's a layer of, of something. It's the layer above the atmosphere. It's just the gas. It's, it's a layer, layer around, around the world. world. Protecting, protecting the world, the world from yeah. all the sun's heat. Stops people from getting polluted by gases and things like that from the aerosols. Hydrocarbons 
carbon dioxide, something like that. That's a layer that protects Earth from the sun's radiation. It's a layer above us which is gradually disappearing. <laughs> Ozone is a form of oxygen. Oxygen normally exists in the air as O2, two atoms bound together. Ozone is O3. A thin layer of ozone surrounds the Earth. Scientists have found a hole in the layer. It comes and goes, appearing for a few months at a time. They say the hole has been caused by chemicals we have let out into the atmosphere, CFCs, halons. What does CFC mean? Chlory, flory. <laughs> I don't know. I've got them. <laughs> Carp. Carbonated something. Chelsea Football Club? Chloride, fluoride, something. They sound like chlory, flory, flums. Chlorate, fluorate, <laughs> carbons. It's bad in the atmosphere and it, and it makes um, icebergs melt. Chlorofluorocarbons. It comes from aerosols and fridges. CFCs are chlorofluorocarbons. CFCs are very useful chemicals, cheap and not in themselves poisonous. They have been used in aerosols, packaging and fridges. Halon has been useful to us in fire extinguishers. The ozone layer absorbs ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Without the ozone layer, UV levels on Earth's surface would be much higher. UV tans our skins, but too much causes skin cancer, and too much can damage crops. We can solve this problem in several ways. There are replacements for CFCs, chemicals called HFCs, hydrofluorocarbons. It will cost us to put HFCs into use. Products will have to be redesigned, factories re-equipped. We don't have to use aerosols. We can use different forms of packaging. But ozone depletion is getting worse. The hole is growing. We have to do something now. The greenhouse effect and ozone depletion are similar in that they both involve gases reacting in the atmosphere with radiation from the sun. But there the similarity ends. There is no direct link between the two. The greenhouse effect, sometimes called global warming, if it is real, offers the most serious threat to our way of life. The sun's rays travel through space and shine into the Earth. The Earth's surface reflects this as heat. Most of the heat is lost back into space. Earth has created an atmosphere in which the natural mix of gases controls the escape of heat. This is how Earth has maintained a livable temperature. Human activity, industry, agriculture are releasing gases which are changing the atmosphere. The greenhouse gases stop the heat escaping into space. They re-radiate it back to Earth, which heats up. This is the greenhouse effect so-called because a similar effect happens in a glass house, the glass working like the gases to trap the heat. Carbon? CFCs. <laughs> Oxides. Carbon dioxide. Hairsprays. Exhaust fumes. The most important of the greenhouse gases is carbon dioxide, CO2, given out whenever fossil fuels are burnt. Tropical rainforests absorb CO2 and release oxygen, but they are being felled at 74,000 acres a day, felled to provide timber and land for farming. So not only are we increasing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere, we are destroying the Earth's power to clean itself. A second greenhouse gas is nitrous oxide given out from farming, cars, and fossil fuel power stations. Third are the CFCs, which we have already met. Not only destroyers of ozone, but are also greenhouse gases themselves. Fourth is methane, released by the herds of cattle kept to provide us with food. 
from leaks of natural gas and from decaying rubbish. Finally, there is ozone. At the highest levels of the atmosphere, ozone is wanted. Lower down, it is a greenhouse gas. This ozone is created by complicated chemical reactions with oxides of nitrogen from car exhaust. Some scientists claim the world is already getting warmer and they predict higher temperatures. The greenhouse effect does not just mean warmer summers and milder winters. It means disrupted weather, disrupted farming, famine. The changed climate may affect the polar ice. Some scientists predict that sea levels may rise, threatening to drown low-lying areas. A big part of the problem is the burning of fossil fuels. When used to make electricity, they produce more CO2 than any other way of generation. Our way of life seems unimaginable without the CO2 producing car. We could develop electric powered vehicles, but the electricity such cars would use would have to be clean electricity. Using fossil generated power would simply shift pollution from car exhaust to power station stack. How do we give up fossil fuels? There are other ways of making electricity which do not give out greenhouse gases. We could use more nuclear power. Nuclear generation of electricity produces no greenhouse gases, but as a source of power, it is not free of criticism, even though it is now the largest source of electricity in Western Europe. Do we cover vast areas of countryside with windmills? Do we develop hydropower? Develop tidal power, and in doing so, disrupt the ecology of our coastal regions and estuaries? We are already trying to get rid of CFCs. Do we all stop eating meat? The greenhouse effect makes solving other problems harder. Unleaded petrol may do more harm than good in that more CO2 can be released. Current solutions to acid rain only burn more fuel and so release more CO2. There are no easy answers. A major step in the right direction is simply to save energy, burning less coal and oil, using these fuels less wastefully. A possible option is to give up some of the benefits of modern life to live an alternative lifestyle. The most alarming fact is that the world has reached this stage through the work of the developed world only. Most of the earth doesn't use much fuel, doesn't drive a car, doesn't have a fridge. But these are things the third world wants, passionately. What will happen if every Chinese peasant owns a car? Every house in every Indian village a fridge? To solve Earth's problems could mean denying what we have to others. We will have to assist the rest of the world with money and technology. We cannot ask people with nothing to pay for our mistakes. Maybe in time, the problems of other types of power will seem small compared to the dangers of fossil fuels or having to give up our way of life. We have reached this most dangerous time in our history on Earth in only a few years. Our industrial world could pass away as quickly as it began. The clock is running. The problems are with us now and they need solutions.